So, and welcome to Parsing John. Uh, we are starting today a completely new section in chapter one. We're going to go from ver verse 35, I believe, through 41 or 42, which means we're getting pretty close to the end. Uh, today we're going to take on both 35 and 36, since they're both very short. So let's go ahead and get started. Here is our rubric, everything that we're looking for as we go through this text. So let's begin. Altrea die iterum stabat Ioannes et ex discipulis eos do duo, et respiciens Jesum ambulantem dicit ecce agnus dei. Very first thing that we want to find in a sentence when we're translating from another language into our own is our verb. So we take a look through these, we see that stabat right there is our first candidate. Bat is its ending. This comes from bambas bat. It is the imperfect tense third person singular and it is active and indicative what it means was standing so we know that we want a singular subject that doesn't mean that we will find a subject sometimes the verb all plays the role of the subject as well but let's double check so we go back to the beginning alterea could be the subject because it's got a a there, but we don't know whether it's long or short. It could be neuter plural. So let's keep checking. Uh, DA, since DA is a fifth declension, we know that when it ends in just an E, it's going to be long and ablative, singular, masculine, or feminine, depending on how the word is used. So that tells us that alterea might actually be ablative as well, since DA could be feminine. Iterum is a adverb. So we have to keep going. Uh, Ioannis, we find a name here. This one is not a standard Latin word, so it doesn't form normally. And as we've seen it before, this one is clearly going to be our nominative singular subject. So John was standing. And then we come back to these three words, try to figure out what they were doing. And iterum means meanwhile. Altera, we should take altera modifying DA since John is masculine and there's nothing else for altera to modify, so this must also be ablative singular. We'd want to know what function the ablative is playing here, and one of the functions that ablative the ablative shows us without prepositions, and especially when we have something like the word day, is ablative of time when. So this would be on and then alterea, not alterea, altera tells us that this is another or a later on another day. Meanwhile, John was standing at and. So this means that either we've got a second subject to go with John, which doesn't make sense since this is singular, or this is introducing a subordinate clause or an additional clause. So take a look at this one. We don't see any obvious verb. We're just going to have to move on with what we have, see if we can figure out if a verb is intended from the con uh, from the context, or if we need to repeat a previous verb, pull a verb from later. X is a preposition, and it normally takes, normally, still thinking Greek now, sorry, X only takes the ablative in Latin. As we take a look at discipulis, this is IS, which could either be a third declension genitive singular, or a dative or ablative plural of the first and second declension. Discipulus is a second declension noun normally. Sometimes it's used in the first declension when you're talking about women or girls who are students. So this is going to be ablative and plural. And then masculine or feminine, though masculine is the more likely. Aeus here comes from is ea id. And we know that this form got our forms of isa ed memorized is actually genitive singular it is not masculine feminine or neuter since all three of the genders share the same form for the genitive that means that our prepositional phrase appears to end right here and then duo duo is the nominative or accusative form of the number two so nominative or accusative and it is by its very nature plural and then at least in the nominative form like this, I believe it could be masculine or neuter. 
probably masculine since Discipolis is masculine. And X with Discipolis here and a number tells us that this is partitive X, uh, partitive prepositional phrase. I forget exactly what this one is called, if it even has a special name, but this would be from disciples and then aos of most likely him since he's a noun in there though we would expect actually in latin to find if it were referring specifically to john a possessive reflexive uh, suas suasum a form of that but we don't see that here so uh, this word since we're not using a reflexive leaves open the possibility that it's talking about somebody else's believe we've had that same problem before. I don't remember what verse that was. Okay, so this is verse 35. On another day, meanwhile, John was standing, and two from his disciples. Now verse 36. And, <clears throat> all right, I want to find our verb again. The spikians doesn't have a verbal ending. Instead, we can see that this is a participial adjective. Yes, is not a verb. Ambulantem is also participial adjective. Dikit here is our verb finally. IT tells us that this is third person singular. This is the present stem of this verb. We know that this one is a third conjugation. It's active and indicative. He says, take a look at our only noun for now. For the direct quote, which would start there. Yesum is not nominative, so we have to assume John as our subject here as well. John says, so let's go back and finish this part of it. Respikians, as I said, is a participle. This is, since it's a third declension participle, a present one. And in S, there, that ending tells us it's either nominative, singular, masculine, feminine, or neuter, or accusative, singular, neuter. John is our nominative, so it has to be masculine, therefore nominative. Masculine, nominative, singular, present, active, participle. And this is looking back. Yesum is accusative, singular, masculine, it means Jesus. And this is the direct object of our preposition right here. Ambulantem is accusative singular masculine or feminine. Since Jesus is accusative singular, this is going to be modifying him. And it is, of course, also present, active, and a participle. Walking. Now, we don't have to translate participles just as verbing. Sometimes the context will allow us to use other words like as, wow, because usually if we have a ablative absolute with a participle, it's easier to do that. But since these are just standard adjectives, not in an ablative absolute, as is a pretty good option for translating them. So as he was walking. And we could do the same thing with this one, but we're not going to. Because why not? Eke, in our direct statement, means look or behold. I've taken a look at this before, and I don't remember now if we figured out what word it came from. That's, that's usually the way it is. The, the word, um, I believe it's ide in Greek, comes from oida, and it's somewhat like an imperative, but it's used as an exclamation, just as eke is, so can't go any further into that. Sorry. Agnus dei, we don't have any verb in here, which means... We probably are supposed to assume a form of sum. Agnus is nominative, singular, masculine, and it means lamb. And then dei could be nominative plural or genitive singular masculine. We've already got a nominative singular masculine, and there's no conjunction to connect the two of them so that dei could be nominative. So dei has to be genitive, no, yes, genitive singular and also masculine, of God. And then that's where verse 36 ends. We don't know if the, pre the quotation ends there, so I'm not going to put the end quote marks on it at this time. Maybe at the beginning of the next video, if it's clear that we need to do that. All right. Verse 35 and 36 in their full context. 
Oh, and as I said, we might be able to put a verb in here. I, I, we'll, we'll take a look at that when we've gone through the whole context. On another day, meanwhile, John was standing and two from his disciples and looking back at Jesus, as he was walking, or at Jesus walking, he says, look, Lamb of God. So if we're going to stick in a form of sum right there, then we would want to do it in the first position in the sentence after ecce, of course, so that it can indicate the existence of something rather than cause a link. So we only have Agnes, there's no predicate or anything like that for a form of sum to connect it to, so we just translate it as there is. And from what I can tell, there's no problem in adding a, verse, a, a verb like that in this position. But still, we should always put things like this in brackets because they are additions that we're making based on our understanding of the text, and it might be that they don't properly fit. There is. And there we go. So that's all of verse 35 and 36. We still don't have a verse for the, uh, not a verse, a verb for this one. It's possible that Another form of sum is assumed from this, in which case duo would probably be nominative. But then again, it's also possible that this is intended as the direct object of uh, Dikit. He says this to duo, but normally we wouldn't find the recipient of words to be the accusative. We would expect the indirect object. So, not sure what's going on here without a verb. We're just going to have to leave it as is. Putting a form of sum in there, I'm not sure that makes any sense. And uh, there are, there were two from his disciples. I'm not sure if that is actually intended in the text, whereas this is reasonably safe. I hope taking a look at these two has been helpful. If you have better ideas than I do about that, or if you disagree with me there, feel free to let me know, and I will probably ignore you for a few, few days because of school. So, again, thank you very much for watching me. Sorry for the rockiness of the house today and my voice. Um, there was a forest fire, apparently, within a couple miles of where I live, and uh, I was at work. Kind of concerned that my house might be on fire. Fortunately not. And also, it's horribly windy. Enough about me. I hope you have a good day.